liquid refreshment can leave its mark on the table. Coasters come between the glass and that. But two centuries ago, coasters were mainly placed on the rim of the glass to keep out flies. Made of felt, they unfortunately spread germs. So the cardboard coaster was invented to improve hygiene on the pub scene. Beverage coasters protect the table and are also a marketing tool. Raise the glass and you'll see advertising catchphrases and promotional graphics. In fact, some bar hoppers consider coasters pub art and accumulate vast collections. Production at this facility in Germany starts with spruce wood. In this case, it's from the Black Forest nearby. They spray the wood with water to moisten the bark. Then it's into a tumbler that tosses the wood logs. As they knock against each other, the bark peels off. The debarked wood exits onto a conveyor with slots to correctly orient it for entry into a massive grinder. Inside, chains press the wood logs against the grinding stone, shredding them into chips. Water flows over the grinding stone to cool it and carry away the chips, which are then mixed into a mash that has a porridge-like consistency. It's pure wood pulp. They now add leftover product from previous beer coaster production to the pulp. This will be used to make the middle layer of the beer coasters. Finally, they mix residual paper from the manufacturer of magazines and envelopes with water. This creates a lighter colored pulp. It will be used for the printable surfaces of the beer coaster. They spray the pulp onto a mesh that drains water from it. The fibrous wood core goes between the layers of the lighter pulp. Spigots apply a mix of wheat starch and water that acts as a glue between the layers. Off the mesh conveyors now, the pulp board travels between cylinders that squeeze out the moisture. More heated cylinders dry it. Knives now cut the board into large rectangles, sized for the coaster printing and cutting machinery. This specialty cardboard is known as wood pulp board. It's lightweight, yet highly absorbent. Next, it's over to the printing department to put the beer coaster artwork on the wood pulp board. They use offset printing, a process that involves more revolving cylinders. Color cylinders pick up ink and transfer it to the printing cylinders. From there, the image goes to a rubber-wrapped cylinder that then prints it onto the sheets. A print specialist scrutinizes the print job close up with a magnifying glass. He checks the color and clarity of the images and confirms that they're correctly positioned on the sheet. The borders of the images must line up with the grid of blades on the die cutting machinery. If the alignment is even slightly off, every coaster on the sheet would be ruined as the die cutter punches out the coasters, dozens of them in one swoop. The coasters end up over little chutes and pushers give them a nudge. They fall down the chutes and land neatly on a pallet below. The coasters stack up, and when there are a hundred or so in each pile, they're ready for packaging. Machinery shrink wraps the stacks, and they're ready for the thirsty masses. This factory can produce and package 10 million offset printed beer coasters every day, so there should be no shortage at cocktail hour. They also print coasters using a centuries-old technology known as letterpress. Blank coasters drop down into the machine. A rolling wheel presses each coaster against an ink plate. It's a system that both prints the image and embosses it on the cardboard. It's a difference you can both see and feel. Letterpress production is lower volume than offset, generating 100,000 coasters per day. For coasters, the design possibilities are endless. Just raise a glass and enjoy.